Welcome to Hot Issues. Today we are taking a look at the Savannah Accelerated Development Authority. Did something go wrong with the authority? Is everything okay? And if something went wrong, what was it that went wrong? What is the future of the Savannah Accelerated Development Authority, SADA? Welcome to Hot Issues. <laughs> Welcome back to Hot Issues and today we are taking a look at SADA, Savannah Accelerated Development Authority. We are looking at its mandate, we are looking at the difficulties that it has had and we will probably take a look into its future. And with us in the studio is the Chief Executive Officer of the Savannah Accelerated Development Authority. Mr. Charles Abogri. So you're welcome to the studio. Thank you, sir. In real concrete terms, perhaps what has happened and what is about to happen in order to bring about this transformation? Are there specific concrete projects which will give make this dream reality? Okay. Let's discuss the what has happened because I think this is critical for re-establishing that public trust and the public support behind the creation of SADA mm -hmm. and Act 2010. Without it, what we want to do going forward will be severely constrained. So what had happened? What had happened was that a certain amount of money, approximately 140 million cities was was f was found to as seed capital. I say 140 million cities, as opposed to 200 million, which was the, the fact because when the 200 million was created, the rest of government tapped into it. So what actually finally ended in the Sada pot account was about 140 million cities. So this seed capital was supposed to help to the establishment of the authority. You know, you, you put in the right sort of people. You create spaces for it to work. You build the systems and infrastructure in order to do this facilitating, leveraging, and coordination role. But they, it took a while to set up SADA. There was a lot of public discussion about the creation of SADA. And therefore, there was a lot of public expectation about SADA. And therefore, when this institution was just about created, I use the word just about because the systems weren't solidly in place, the people were not yet in place. But just when we were just about created, the pressure to, to show results for an institution to be seen to be delivering results probably impacted on the institution. So it went for the shortest cut or how you bring about results. And that is you contract companies or others to deliver big enough programs so they are visible across the entire Sada zone so that the ordinary people of in the Sada zone would see that Sada had arrived. This is what happened. Now that's more PR. <coughs> so it, it was more than PR. It was, it was to show, the, 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 the logic was that when people can see that it is actually delivering something, then the public support behind it will be even stronger to enable it to go further. But as I said, in, doing, in being in a hurry to do so, before the systems were built, you expose yourself, and this is what happened with the institution, to a delivery model which no one is happy with. So everybody had a different way of criticizing the impact of the delivery model. And some criticized the delivery model as being partisan, that because you are contracting, there are faces behind this big contracting. They are associated, they have associations, whether consciously or unconsciously, people can unpack 
who are the beneficiaries of these large contracts as opposed who didn't and in a society where partisanship is so central to our discourse this is one of the issues in the public domain secondly the Before issues we go to the second tier of, of the answer this problem of, of partisanship and so on was meant to be cured by the public procurement law the enactment of the public procurement law and other legislation how come that we still have it with regards to SADA okay I think the great thing about trying the curing of the partisanship began with the way the law was done first it was you know the initiative started with the MPP and became expanded and crystallized by the NDC the person who tabled the law was NPP in Parliament this was a perfect opportunity for a non-partisan coalition to go forward. The procurement law guides and for what I know what happened didn't violate the procurement law. It utilized the procurement law so even sole sourcing contracting is permissible under the procurement law and permission was given by the procurement authority for this sole sourcing contracting so there is a slight difference between following the law and you know the actual implications of going the, by the law in a certain way so the law was not violated but the delivery model opened itself to discontent and dissatisfaction mm. and this is really what happened so the tree planting project which was an attempt to do a big bang tree planting so that there are at least five six million trees out there the process of planting those trees was also supposed to create five thousand uh, jobs so young people in every part of the southern district districts will be contracted to plant a certain number of trees and take care of them until they have reached a set this is a clear visible tangible type of a project but it's a big bang and requires a lot of money concentrated under one delivery model management when that is perceived to go wrong the entire process goes wrong there is of course another alternative way to do tree planting you can mobilize the people through the churches and the da, 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 and you can disperse it without it becoming a contractual process but as i said the big bang was part of a response for to a, pre, a perceived pressure to be seen to be delivering certain things jobs and trees so they used the law they didn't they, they, the management didn't violate the law but the delivery model exposed itself to problems this is the problem and I think the first lesson for us a new team in Saddam is that yes we have to be seen to be delivering things but we have to balance the immediate with the future transformational change takes some time there's building blocks you must put in place and there are ways in which you can get immediate results that that's not necessarily a big contracting model and we have to think about how we do that you ask the question what therefore concretely can we do to go forward to show that transformation is happening? Hello and welcome back to Hot Issues and we are in conversation with Mr. Charles Abugari, the new Chief Executive Officer of the Savannah Accelerated Development Authority and we are talking about everything SADA. Sir, what can be done now to move this project forward? Okay. Currently, um, we have four strategic programs, ways of working. I use the word programs as opposed to projects. Um, the first is the delivery of public services. How do we expand the delivery of public services to the poor? We are, after all, a public entity and with a a responsibility to coordinate and to see alignment mm. so the first thing we are doing is that we have undertaken in the last few months 
a very comprehensive mapping of our health infrastructure, where are the schools, what is their state, who is in them, what is the quality of education from primary to tertiary in the region. And that's the health, the education infrastructure, and the health infrastructure from chips to, to, to large hospitals. What is the quality of delivery? Where are they located? Therefore, what are the gaps? So the first, there are infrastructure gaps that have got to be filled. To make the case for additional investment infrastructure gaps in health and education, we have to know what the gap is. So we have these maps which will be launched. They will be interactive. They will be launched. But on the basis of that maps, we have started to plan the convening of the public sector. So we are planning in either mid-March or first week of April a health sector forum. We are interested in how many, where the health personnel are and how we get the concentration of doctors in Kolobu, who are currently 50% in Kolobu and uh, pushed it to the, where we need them. We are interested in ensuring that the health insurance scheme, which is the mechanism for poor people's access to good services, works. We should follow through this. And we are interested in how the social protection scheme, LEAP, is rolled out and effectively. We have to make this public sector delivery model work. And we have to bring citizens into engaging with it. This is the first one. So there's the gap feeling infrastructure and there's a performance monitoring issue. Then on the economy, the, the biggest problem to investing in the north is infrastructure. The roads are terrible. It has the least penetration of ICT infrastructure and it has the least penetration of energy, although there is NETCO. So we are helping with the energy generation, facilitating those who want to do solar generation and participating where it is necessary through equity to generate power. We are actively working with the World Bank and others to make sure that the Kalugu multipurpose dam is up and running. This is the public sector infrastructure with a private sector participation and we can facilitate the private sector participation in the type of infrastructure where public private relationships work that is our role so we have mapped all the infrastructure everything where our ICT passes where our energy system where are our roads and so on and so forth and we can have them integrated this is done by the Remote Sensing Lab of Geography, uh, Geography Department and so on, with the support of UNDP and others. But, uh, but the same with agricultural infrastructure, where USAID has been developing the maps to integrate where our warehouses and so on and so on and so forth. If we put it all together, we, we have a better chance of marketing what exists, both as opportunity and as gap. So we are preparing, as we speak, a major investment, business and investment forum, jointly with the Ghana Institution of Engineers, for the last week of March, 24th to the 28th, as our first effort to start to bring people to the place and to expose opportunity. Mm. But we can do something to start modernizing Tamale, modernizing WA, bringing dynamic economies to Ketekrachi and Kintampo. But we start with war. And there is no reason why we cannot have a shopping mall in war with proper housing infrastructure. Why is one, I mean, and Tamale, Tamale in particular. Tamale is the largest growing, the fastest growing town in West Africa. The numbers are big. And therefore, but if you put in 200 to 300 million dollars of an integrated housing and commercial infrastructure, in the heart of Tamale, which is not necessarily the state fully funding it, but the state playing a role, including SNIT and you know state insurance corporation because they acquire public money, consciously co-investing with the private sector and with SADA and the Metropolitan Authority. That 200 to 300 million 
will be, I said, a transformational investment in Tamale. It will be commercially profitable. We have done that numbers. We have done the concept. It will employ hundreds of people in the construction process, hundreds of people working in the pl place, a recreational place for people to go. It is our responsibility of SADA to remind others that Tamale exists as a business opportunity and help pe put people together to do this. This is not just talk. We, are, we have developed the concept. We are in the process of pulling the different people together to make this work. And we should do so in, in, in other places as well. We are facilitating a number of smaller investments as well. Tricycles are, are running around, but we should assemble them in Tamale. We should assemble them across the southern zone and supply the Sahelian region as well as the south because they are, they are the most robust piece of transport for going into the villages. We should modify them as rural ambulances and solve the ambulance problem. We should modify them to carry water, you know, to, so that they can penetrate into small places to provide water, and so on. SADA can help bring this about with us, SADA being, SADA being the one setting up a, a, a tricycle assembly. But we can facilitate, we can leverage, we can solve problems, we can put in small money. That makes it possible to do that. Similarly, if you want road maintenance, we have to have a heavy construction equipment plant pools. Right now, if you want to maintain a rural road anywhere in Boku, you have to hire the caterpillar from either Kumasi or Accra. The cost of bringing it from Kumasi to Boku and back is a minimum of 100,000 Ghana cities. It is impossible to maintain rural roads like this. SADA can put a small capital working with other private actors to ensure that plant pools exist on the ground. These are things we are working at in a very, because we have to prioritize these basic infrastructure issues to make it possible for investment. We have to test irrigation models. So as I was saying, we are pushing the World Bank to support the Palugu Dam. But the dams that were done are not necessarily successful. There's Tono Dam, there's Via Dam, and there is Butanga Dam and others. The model has a problem. We have to think about a way in which this irrigation infrastructure is not a nine-day wonder. So we are testing something with a, a, a Dutch firm, jointly with the Dutch University, with uh, the, the, the Sahara Agricultural Research Institution, and others, to create a team to see how a public-private arrangement can work on a, a 400-hectare irrigation farm that allows a commercial core to then work with an outgrower system of small farmers. So the commercial core, because they are farming themselves, will have responsibility for the maintenance of the infrastructure and the distribution of the water system. So we, we are, this is a joint project. We, we call it the Sicily Coulpon Project. Mm -hmm. It is an interesting test. We, first, it tests the whole concept of what does a PPP mean it, when it comes to something like agricultural production. These are all new, this PPP idea. When they were applied to heavy water management, urban water management, they were a disaster. Therefore, if we are moving them into new ways of thinking, we should test them and see what an effective public sector rule to ensure public interest is protected, but also that you have a commercial and sustainable impact. These are rules SADA is already exploring. Fine, but shouldn't the, the, the focus be on, on creating a new image for SADA? It seems to me that SADA's image is, is, is terrible. Yes, we have to work on an image in two ways have a communications outfit that works <coughs> we don't have a communications outfit that works we didn't even have a, a website that functions we did support a whole host of friends pro bono we just launched our website yesterday this is sadagh.org it has the basic information about sada the law Eventually, when we have an audited account, we'll put them there. Every project that has to be bid for, we'll put them there. So 
that's our first step. The second is we are trying to build a communications team. So as I said, at the moment, even the preparation towards our business investment forum is all pro bono, done by Ghanaians, you know, in Accra, Kumasi, and so on, to help us deal with that. This is one of the problems I said we didn't invest in the institution. So we have to invest in the institution. So there is that media communications bit. But even when we pick up a media communications bit, there will be many Ghanaians who would say, we hear all this talk before. Let's see the result. Therefore, we must simultaneously invest in repositioning the organization away from the delivery of services directly into the kinds of things I was explaining to you about. Mm -hmm. But also getting concrete things done using the approach I am describing. So people see it can work. People see that results can come. People see that in concretely that Saba has things to offer. That business people, Ghanaian or non ghanaian who want to come and do something can actually come to our door, knock at it, and be received, you know, uh, warmly. And have, but we have to build our capacity to do so without creating new problems. So, two ways. Our communications outfit we must build, but also a practical delivery. So that a year, year and a half down the line, people can see things rolling out, which is not sadder putting tens of millions of, of CDs into a one contract. Well, how come Soda got such a bad image? I mean, the allegations of corruption, the allegations of inefficiency, and so on. How come? Is it true that there have been some corrupt elements in the management of Soda? Okay. <coughs> I, I, I think... <laughs> The board is, <laughs> is looking at this issue very carefully because the problems were raised by the auditor general, the, the audit service, who audited SADA and raised several concerns. Therefore, you know, the public concern is not out of the blue. So people are entitled by the questions raised by the audit, the audit which were leaked, to be concerned. Now, some of them, of the problems, are exactly what we say. When you deliver, when you do a contract, even if you went through a large contract, even if it was all legal, even if it passed through the procurement law, it didn't violate the procurement law, the very fact of certain individuals being identified with it generates lots of concerns. And it's difficult to tell whether in this process, whether there were kickbacks or there were no kickbacks. You can't trace those. So those will remain allegations. But they were clearly a waste of resources. That there, 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 there was a case about uh, the planting of trees yes. in Hamatan or dry season and so on. Okay. And so the, trees, the planting of trees was one thing people raised. And there is, it's, there were some trees planted. In fact, when the University of Development Studies did, a, did an independent audit, they found that over 70% of the trees that were meant to be planted were planted. But that then means that some trees were not planted or that they were planted and they died. Now, the situation has become even more difficult because the contract was cancelled. Which means that even the trees that survived, we didn't then have a mechanism anymore to make them, to keep the ones that are alive, alive for the three years. So, that, so clearly, resources were applied in a manner that if we sat back and looked at the delivery model, we may not apply them this way. There were some resources which were given out in contract and they were not yet delivered. Therefore, we are entitled to claw back some of those resources. And the board is dealing with that together with the Attorney General's Department as to what we can claw back. 
there are some resources that will just be lost yeah because the design and the whole arrangement um you know resulted in it and therefore culpability becomes difficult for that reason so this is it but it's the thing i i since i'm new the thing i say is that maybe for us we are lucky you can take a look back and you say that's not the way to interpret the law and your ways of working maybe you should do it this way we are also lucky as a country generally because this happened when the institution was very young that means you can correct things when an institution is much older and practice becomes entrenched even worse things happen but people become immune to the fact that they, you have a rot in the internal to the institution mm. but it has a facade that seems to suggest that things are working in the case of sada is a small thing and everything is exposed is that you exposed to to your bare bottom that allows the institution to be more properly built because as i said nothing no i can't see in a law you know that has the intent of transforming that place better than act 2010 Act 8052010. Mm. Mm. Now the, the worst story is in fact it has become a joke now about guinea fowls that flew to Burkina Faso. What is that joke about? <coughs> well, Did guinea fowls really fly to Burkina Faso. No, I think somebody went to the radio station and in the usual manner in which the person was in even a sada official or somebody trying to defend you know sada went to a radio station and <laughs> made it as a joke you know kind of oh the vinifar have flown you know and laughed about it and then it became the thing but the reality is that the savanna is the place where guinea fowls have been domesticated for hundreds of years it is the place to grow them every household has them deaf and ghanians i love the guinea fowl and the potential to export them is huge so as a, a program not necessarily a bad idea to focus on ensuring that you multiply the guinea fowl but as i said the big bang approach through contracting through one company creates its own problems the idea was that if you want to modernize the you know multiplication and cultivation of the guinea fowl you also want to construct places to process them package them and supply them to the supermarkets this accounted for the re- for the bulk sum of money that you j- you buy incubators and you provide incubation services because the guinea fowl has two main the cultivation the problem with them the two one they they don't sit on their own eggs they're very lazy animals so when they lay an egg you have to find a chicken who or which also has eggs able and ready to set on them you are the guinea fowl x to the chicken x and the chicken hatches them so if you are in a family you have x but no ready chicken to set on them you have to sell the x so incubation is an important injection of modernization so this was built into the pro- the, the project the second is uh, health because at some point they die i mean they they are very susceptible to certain disease fortunately our veterinary service has found the vaccine for it so the idea was also provide a vaccination service at a central place which accounted for the need to construct things okay now that didn't quite work and they didn't quite spend most of the money mm-hmm. to even start So they started constructing with the grand component of the agreement. So the agreement always had two parts. A grand component to allow you to mobilize and so on and so forth. And 
and then you know uh, uh, an equity component which is clawed back mm -hmm. paid back to sada so it is this component that didn't didn't they didn't quite use the money significantly so this is the discussion currently with the attorney general's department to try and claw back as much of that money as possible so just uh, to, to are, are we going to expect <coughs> are we are we to expect that officials who may have had problems with the law will be prosecuted in the Sada case i think the board is just finishing their review of everything that was raised by the auditor general by the attorney general's department mm. and we issue this report and its recommendations i suspect that uh very soon early in february they'll issue their report that includes recommended actions the savannah zone is also noted you know for rice cultivation and we appear as a country to be spending huge amounts of money on the importation of rice about 400 million dollars of rice every year has that come to your attention and if it has come to your attention what is the strategy okay <coughs> rice cultivation there are three crops that currently is the priority in the northern savannah zone we have just added another crop which is and those three crops are rice maize and cashew nuts rice in particular for the reason that you have mentioned so we usa the world bank ghana government are putting a lot of effort into rice and the last year or two rice called productivity and quantities has has increased quite remarkably and you notice that there's quite a bit of local rice a lot of that comes from the savannah zone the rice milling capacity in the region is massive and but it's only 30 percent capacity utilization at the moment so rice is the core of our strategy especially in the valleys and there is a lot of interest by private actors on rice and these are some of the public private partnerships we have to facilitate but as i said we would like to promote the cultivation of rice not simply as an extractive commodity to supply but as a commodity that can be processed and that can also leverage other jobs in the area and leverage other forms of transformation but to answer your question rice is the key part of the strategy for agriculture and we've zoned nine areas that we called sada's agricultural growth poles and the key the heart of this each of these zones which are largely valleys is rice i i'm sure that and and even the relationship with uh, the cecil coupon project we are talking about the heart is rice well, what about share butter for example she shared not the share nut, which is so crucial has been so crucial you know for especially the, the northern region the share nut industry is also transforming very slowly and needs but needs an injection it has one major problem the nuts are picked by women they often pick them from the bush so the tree is largely in the bush they pick them at dawn to go from where people are to the picking places in the night is difficult they confront snakes scorpions so there have been many efforts to solve this picking problem because over 40 percent estimated are lost to the inability of women to pick them we have to think of a strategy for picking share nuts the second is an organized marketing so cocoa board used to have a strong share nut division that is helping everything from price stabilization to research cocoa board i don't see them anymore actively interested in the share tree that means we have to invest with 
Sari to put more interest in the share tree because they are all wild. They are grown wild. So there's an investment thing to be done. And the third is processing. There are a couple of companies based in Tamil, like the Tama company that is producing creams of all sorts, the first class, which they are exporting, needs capital injection, in which EDIF, the USAID, and others are helping. But there are others in the Tumu area, so the Upper West area is a large place where they are looking for capital to set up that processing capacity. It is this lack of capital, the difficulty of putting, you know, entrepreneurs in the area with technology and capital that has been the problem so to make the share nut industry the share industry what it is you have to solve these various problems this is why sada's investment facilitation role is critical and we we have to play this way role very well for share nut you may have to collaborate with the cocoa research institute which has done remarkable work on processing yes there are several research on processing going there is some research work sada just made a small support it's a phd work so beyond the mechanization method methods this phd study is trying to apply enzyme technology to processing his preliminary results are excellent we will follow through these kinds of research and we would, in the future, as we settle down, create research platforms that allows these new ideas and technology to speak to each other. And then, therefore, to create the bridge between research and actual entrepreneurial investment and incubation of new research ideas. But, yes, share is also is one of the areas, apart from guinea fowl, which is the signature plant of the savannah. Mm. Welcome back to Hot Issues. And we are particularly privileged to have with us Mr. Charles Abugri, who is actually a development specialist and is the newly appointed Chief Executive Officer of the Savannah Accelerated Development Authority. Now, sir, who owns the SADA project? The SADA project, who does it belong to? <laughs> yes, politically, it is so cross-party in its creation that it's an authentic Ghanaian institution. It is a public institution. It was created by law. And the intent is for it to become independent and autonomous. That means, with time, it is intended that it will not rely on government subvention. It will become the authority responsible for facilitating transformation and development in the Savannah Zone. Now, in that sense, it's Ghanaian. But the controversies probably started because of the following. That they having been established by law, the constitution of the, the, the people who were the front face of the authority uh, raised concerns about partisanship and raised concerns about ethnicity. Ethnicity because this is an authority that is Ghanaian, it serves Ghana, it's it's a Ghanaian, it's a national thing, and therefore those who work on it must reflect the face of Ghana. It is predominantly male. There's not a single woman. I mean, the team is still small, generally. But that was a front face of... And for that reason, it's considered, it, it exposed itself to accusations of partisanship and accusations of ethnic. Well, were those not accusations justified? I, no, on the ethnic side, not entirely. Because well, why is it that uh, you can't get somebody from, say, Western region 
heading Sada? I think we should. Why should a Ghana not be able to head Sada? A Ghana should be able to head Sada. A person from a, a Western region should be able to head Sada. A person from a Shanti region should be able to head Sada. And in fact, the only way in which it can thrive is that it, the position of chief executive officer is entirely competitive and professional. This is what it should be. But it is a, a starting, it is a, a foundational thing. And I was appointed by His Excellency the President, partly also in, a, in order to deal with an emergency. So I am still an acting CEO. No, I don't want no. us to reduce it to your appointment. Yeah. Let's, let's stick with the principles. Yeah, yeah but so. so the principle is that it, it has to be. It's the only way in which an independent professional authority can, 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 can actually work well and be sustainable. It's just the same with every, every position in the authority. Board and members, the board members, the members of management team, members of management team. The board members at the moment is a much better reflection of the country than, say, the current management team. Why do you say so? Because the we the the membership is, although professional and representative of institutions and professions, I can point at people from across the country. So I have people, a person from Western region, Central region, I have a person from uh, Volta region, I have a person from Bronga Hafo region, I have person, three other persons from the different parts of Northern Ghana. So I have, I, in that composition, is more as reflective as you can and in that board of seven full-time board members i have three women and so which is not an exact balance but it's a much better balance much much better exactly so that should provide us a guide on when we start to constitute the professional team because as i said to you it's still a very small team it's not the team is not built that we should build a team which is national cross card people apply and become staff because of their competence and professionalism irrespective of their ethnicity but on gender issues you have to consciously make sure that the balance happens I'd like to take you back one step to the Auditor General's reports. And there appeared to be one particular problem with a transaction with Standard... Is it Stambic? What was the problem? Okay. The problem was, I think, uh, I think the Auditor General find, uh, report corrected that in their final submission. The problem was that, initially, the account which was created for SADA was sitting as an account at the Bank of Ghana. This makes it difficult for SADA to operate. So it, they, so it opened an account and the, 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 the chair of the board of SADA at that time was the managing director of Stanbeck. And so the managing director of Stanbeck facilitated the opening of the account in Stanbeck for the money to be moved from the Bank of Ghana into a commercial bank. Now, at this time, it was... But, but that was a problem. Okay. That was considered uh, a conflict of interest. But the intent behind it, from what I understand, was the need to facilitate a quick movement of the money. And subsequently, additional accounts were created in which the money was moved out. A lot of the money was moved out. But they spread the money, therefore, in three accounts at that time. So part of the money that stayed in Stanbeck, the board advised, and then subsequently that was applied to the other two banks, that rather than it sit in a, in a current account, you create two additional accounts. A call account 
and an investment account so that when there's extra cash the money is in an investment account at least earning interest to address and protect at least the value of the of the of the of the of the account as it goes along the call accounts allows you to move money in between the current account and the the investment account and it has a slightly better you know it has some interest earnings in comparison with keeping it purely on a current account so initially the auditor general department read conflict of interest but i think on subsequent explanation of the intent behind it that component was dropped from the final management letter mm. well thank you very much sir for sir. coming to the studio and sharing all of these brilliant ideas about the past present and perhaps the future of the savannah accelerated development authority with us i do hope that all of us including our viewers and those of us in the studio have learned a lesson or two please don't shift your dial keep your dial on where it happens and where it happens is tv3